the crap. Hey. My pa got the itch. Hey. This scale, been it, yeah. Don't lick. This scale, this scale. This scale, yeah. This scale, this scale. All right, y'all. Welcome to the Fish Scale Podcast. We got my bro Jay Waters with us today. Talk to the people, man. Tell, tell them a little bit about yourself, where you're from, all that type of stuff. Shit, what's up, y'all? It's me, your boy Jay Waters, owner and founder of Jay Waters Photography. Y'all get to finally see what I look like in person. So, anyway, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Jalen Waters. I was born and raised in Colorado. Um, I've been uh, I've been doing photography for about well I've, I've been taking pictures for about ten plus years now, but I just I've been doing my photography business for about a month or about almost seven months now. Just launched it in January. Um, for my viewers out here that are down in Atlanta. I will be relocating out there in about a couple in a couple weeks, so I'll look forward to being able to shoot with you guys and get you guys some dope flicks. And honestly, that's about it. Okay, dope, dope. So just tell the people how you first got into photography and just like where that passion first sparked. Mm. My folks always used to tell me that I had a good eye, like since I was like probably like five or six. I would be like in the neighborhood, we would be downtown, and I could easily point out like the different shapes of buildings. I can, I would notice if buildings had like certain sections that were pulled out or whatever, like architectural terms and stuff, if you know what I mean. But um, I would just take, I would just be taking pictures of them because I thought it was cool. But. Yeah, and like honestly started like back in January when actually no not January, last year. I was like, I need to take my pictures up a notch because I'm too talented to keep my work hidden. So that's when January twenty twenty Jay Waters photography scene was born and so I've been doing been doing that ever since. So I can do I do portraits, I do weddings, I do nature, city, micro any any type of pictures you can think of but soon i'm gonna be learning how to do video graphic design album covers all of that so once i become 100 at it i'll definitely be tapping in with everybody to get some work done so okay oh yeah so what what are your favorite type things to take pictures of like you prefer people or nature or like landscapes like you were saying like what's your favorite thing to do yeah, man. To be honest, that's a hard one. I like. I probably like city because, well, I would say my my top three would be city, nature, portrait. The reason I have city up top is because I've always I've always been in, like in the city, in the suburbs and stuff like that. So I just that's just all I ever been around, and then. Nature is number two because I do go out to the mountains quite often. Like I'm up to Breckenridge, Ridge, been up to Steamboat as this park a couple times, just taking some pictures up there. I am a hiker. I may not look like it, but I do. I do like to hike. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. With my nature pictures is from hiking because you don't really see as much nature as you do in the city compared to me. Like I'm. Honestly, for y'all, for those who are like trying to get into photography, my advice I would say go on a hike because you'll never know what you're gonna see and you're gonna take pictures of it. You never know it might come out, it might come out pretty clean. So, just a little bit of word of advice for those who are just getting started. Okay, dope, so. dope. So, like, where would you say you get your uh, like business insight from or business mindset from? Like I know it can be hard, like trying to be an entrepreneur sometimes. Like, where do you get like your mindset from? Uh, I get that from my mom, because after back back in two thousand five, after my grandpa died of cancer, um, my mom decided to. I guess one of the gifts that she had got when he died was a gift basket, but 
she didn't like the way it was put together. So she basically kind of had the mindset of I could do I could do a better quality gift basket and get my product out there. So then, as of two thousand seven, either two thousand six or two thousand seven, that's when she had launched her business, a gift from the heart. She kind of, she doesn't do it anymore, but. She had a business called A Gift from the Heart, so she made gift baskets and gift boxes and stuff like that for like weddings, events, just any, just anything that would require like some kind of like big gift or whatever. So, and I would actually, I was one of the people that would help her run the business. So honestly, I just get my my business mentality from her because if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't even be out here right now. To be honest. So what makes you like special or maybe unique from other photographers kind of in your same way? I know I'm not speaking for every photographer because I know every photographer is different, but I know there are a lot of photographers that only like to stick to just one thing. Like you got photographers that only do school pictures or only do portraits or only take pictures of scenery. I like to be different. I like to have a mix of everything. I like to like the portrait city, anything like that. Like I like to just have my my profile and my um my portfolio kind of consistent of every type of photography you can think of. So there's still there's still a lot that I'm learning right now, but. I am in a stage of my career, though, to where I can say that I am basically on my way up to a professional level. It's going to take some time, but it should. I just got to keep that mindset. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, like, I know you didn't necessarily go to school for any of this. So, like, how did you, like, learn how to edit pictures and things like that? It was kind of just <laughs> honestly, <the> fly. <laughs> honestly, it was just me messing around on the phone. I was just on my phone just messing around with my pictures and I would like play around with some of the editing and stuff like that. Granted, around this time was when I was first getting started, so when I would edit pictures, I would look at them, I'd be like, uh, I look like shit. I can't do it on the phone. I can't do it on the phone. So then I started learning how to use different programs such as like uh, Photoshop. One of my favorite programs that I use is called Pixlr. That's where I edit a lot of my pictures, honestly. But honestly, just edit like learning to edit pictures, it was just kind of a just take it a day at a time type thing. And finally leaves with me working my way up to being able to afford like the different uh, editing softwares and stuff like that so that way I can make all my pictures one hundred. Okay. Yes, sir. For sure. For sure. So I know you do a little bit of music. Tell the people about that. Man, I need to get back on my music, to be honest. But I've been so focused on my pictures. But uh, check out my SoundCloud. It's uh, J Waters, J A Y space W A T E R, and then the S is a dollar sign. I did just drop a song a couple weeks ago with my boy Matt called Up From Here. So be sure to check that out on SoundCloud. I'm waiting to hear back to see if they got on all platforms. I'm hoping it did. But basically, the song, it originally started off as like, a, I would say I was just kind of just freestyling. Like, just freestyling on a beat. Because I was working with one of my producers, uh, Rex. He stayed up in Washington. Shout out my boy. But I was just kind of listening to some of his beats that he sent me. And I listened to this one. I was like, okay, okay, this shit, this shit's kind of clean. So I just started going. I just started writing, just going off of it. Got a whole chorus, got a whole verse. I didn't honestly, I didn't know what else to say in the song. So I, I hit my boy up. I was like, hey man, I got, I got a song I'm working on. You want to hit this second verse? He came through. He said, yeah. So we, we finished the song and like literally about a week we finished the song in a week got it out and now i'm just trying to get it up so like i said check out up from here jay waters 
my boy will post the link and stuff on his uh, pages, but I hope y'all uh, fuck with me. So let's bring it up to 1,000 and just make this shit go viral. Right. Uh, I mean so business. I mean business. The man spoke, bro. Uh, so I know you're going out to Georgia here soon. Uh, compare like the culture out there t compared to the culture out here. I know you've been out there for a summer before. Like, is it a lot different? Is it kind of the same? From my experience being out there, the culture is different. Like, a lot different. Like, I'm not saying that, like, Colorado is not diverse or anything like that, because it's, it's becoming a lot more diverse. But with, with Atlanta, I feel like Atlanta likes to keep a lot of their, like, old school, old school vibes as well. Is bringing in the new, like the new generational stuff like that. Um, as far as the music scene out there, it's a lot different. Everybody knows how Atlanta is. They kind of run shit right now. Um, as far as the music scene out here, I'd say it's coming up. It's coming up. I know. I know a couple people out here really, really putting putting in work. Like my dude. Uh, Diablo, my boy Steez, um, a lot of people. My dude Fuego Flame. I got a lot. I got a lot of people out here, really trying to put Colorado on the map. So shout out to y'all, and I definitely can't wait to see what Georgia's got to offer for me. So it's gonna be exciting. For sure, for sure. Uh, so like, you excited to go out there? Or you kind of. Like, you kind of bone about leaving Colorado, or, like, what's the sentiment there? One thing I can say is I feel like I did leave a mark on the state because I did host an event last Tuesday for y'all who missed out. It was a Black Lives Matter event. Um, basically, what the event was is I just wanted to get the community together, everybody just have fun, but also know the reason of why we were hosting the event. Um, the fun that we went through for the event was called is called the Black Resilience Fund, which was launched and launched on June first by a guy by an African American male named Cameron. Um, but basically, what the Black Resilience Fund is, it's an emergency fund that helps like raise money and save money to provide immediate needs for low income neighborhoods such as grocery. All right, man, getting back into it, um, we were talking about the Black Resilience Fund. Um, so you put on a event to try and raise money for it, and you raised a little bit over $100. But within a month, you said they raised over how much? They raised, as of when I checked two days ago, they had raised, uh, it was like... It was like eight hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars is what they had raised just within a month. So people like literally all over the country and the world and stuff are seeing this fun. Cause you know, a majority of the people now they're they're fighting against the police and all the all this stuff that's going on. The majority of the people now who actually support the Black Lives Matter they they've been putting in big bucks for for this fund because a lot of lower income neighborhoods a lot of times people are working two three four jobs dealing drugs and doing all this stuff so they can make ends meet and sure. just so that way they can be able to provide groceries just for that just to help their mom just to help their mom out but I feel like with this fund it'll help a lot of those lower income people have a little bit of a little bit of spare money to kind of play with and like not have to worry about bills 24 7 not have to worry about oh what am i going to eat what am i going to eat in the next hour or whatever like with this money that they've raised we we're going to be able to help everybody to be able to get them on their feet and hopefully see see a change in what people decide they want to do with their life the crap, hey. my pop got the itch, hey. 